Police in Fairfield are searching for a killer who murdered a 23-year-old woman. David Winter is at the Fairfield Police Station to tell us what he's learned about the case. David. Well, Cammie, the police are releasing very little information right now. We have a name, an age, an approximate time of death for the victim. The rest we know comes from a neighbor and a 911 call. Uh, man, uh, so I think there's a dead body here. A 911 call coming in at about 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon when two men who had been watching Catherine Labono's dog say they stopped by her apartment to return her keys. Okay, is she breathing at all? No, she's gone, man. There's blood on the floor. I don't know what the hell happened here. We spoke with Catherine's neighbor, Cynthia Phillips, who says she heard loud noises Tuesday night. I heard some loud banging, 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 and I got up, turned my light on, came downstairs, looked around in here in my place because I thought somebody was in my place, so that's how loud it was. Not finding anything, Cynthia says she went back to sleep. The next day, Catherine was found. We got to check for a pulse, man. My friend said he already did, she's cold. He said she feels cold? Yeah. The police report estimates Catherine's time of death at 10 o'clock Tuesday night. The 911 caller says he found a shell casing near Catherine's head, but no weapon. Neighbors say they are shaken. It's like, if I turn the right way and, you know, make sure if I am time it right, I don't have to explain to my kid why they're pulling a body bag out. So, I mean, that's, those are the weird things that go through your head and you're like, man, this is, this is not okay. Well, friends on Catherine Labono's Facebook page say that she graduated from Mar uh, Purcell Marion High School and played soccer there, and, uh, and that's in East Walnut Hills. Now, there is a discrepancy that did pop up this afternoon. The coroner released a report saying that Catherine died at 11.30 a.m. yesterday. That conflicts with the police report that she died at 10 o'clock on Tuesday night. Of course, a lot more information will come to light as this investigation continues. Back to you in the studio, Cammie. All right, David, thank you. And this is the same apartment complex where just two days ago, a man drove into a pond and he and his daughter both drowned. Police are giving no indication that these two incidents are in any way related. It just appears to be a tragic coincidence.